social and economic justice, basically, and environmental justice, too, because we can create jobs that will fix the infrastructure and create an alternative energy uh, um, economy and put people to work, but we just need the money to do it, the revenue to do it. Well, where is that revenue? The revenue has been used to kill people in other countries and, and not make us more safe, but make us more vulnerable. The money has gone in the hands of the very rich, Wall Street and major transnational corporations through tax breaks, through bailouts, through corruption. So we want that money to come back and be put for the, good, the best use for human beings, for the 99% as the Occupy movement kind of describes it. The 1% are, are all taken care of, the 99% aren't, and there's plenty of wealth there to do everything we need to have a just and healthy society. We've got, we can do uh, environmental jobs, retrofits, uh, solar paneling, expand and improve uh, our public transportation system so we reduce our reliance on fossil fuel and help to fight global warming, which is a huge issue and a huge problem. Today we're in New York and we're going to march across to meet people from Washington. That's in correct. Solidarity we're with bring, Vancouver. bring these common issues together across the river that's part of part of what's what this is about for sure and also you know people don't talk about how unions have lost their power the last three decades uh, and folks uh, the, the, the the corporate media tries to say that unions are the problem when in fact people take for granted the fact that for unions we wouldn't have the 40 hour week we wouldn't have vacations we wouldn't have overtime pay. So I'd like to introduce my friend, Kaja Claybaugh. Kaja Claybaugh is the past president of the International Longshoremen and Warehouse Union Local 4 here in Vancouver. What we're facing as far as uh, corporate greed, we've got a company, Bungie Grain, up at the Port of Longview, that in their lease agreement with the port said that they would hire longshore labor. As soon as they opened their facility, they said they're not going to use longshore labor. So what do we do? 500 of us, in the middle of the night, went up to Longview, stood on the tracks. Stop the train from coming in. That's right, solidarity, baby. So, we uh, turned the train around. They took it to uh, Portland, hit it there for a week, and then uh, ended up having to take it all the way back to Pasco while they decided what they were going to do. The media has done a really good job of making it sound like our fight is with another union. And it's not. Are we disappointed in that other union? Yes. But that's not who our fight is with. It is with EGT. <laughs>
We need to connect our struggles so that we all can make the changes we are fighting for, which is good jobs, no more cuts. Our congresswoman here, she did support six days a week last July, but now she says we must consider Representative Isa's bill, 2309, which is a union-busting, postal service-destroying bill. We say no way! But what we're doing here today is saying we're all connected. And as letter carriers, we know that. We're in every community in this nation. For some of us, it might be a threat to the livelihood of our families that has brought us here today. Yeah. It might be a threat to union jobs with decent wages. It might be a threat of layoffs. It might be a threat of reduction of benefits. It might be a threat to Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security. Working people of Washington and Oregon are tired of the attacks on working people. Because we're tired. We're tired of not getting a living wage. We're tired of not getting the benefits we need. Some of us might be here because we care. We care about the widow down the street that's not getting what she needs to get by. We care about our fellow workers. And we're tired of corporate bailouts. What America needs right now is good jobs. Yeah. No more cuts. Good yeah. jobs. No cuts. Good jobs. So this is Wanda Buck, a personal hero of mine here at the Hilton. Six years ago when I got hired at the Hilton, I had no idea what a union was. I never worked for a union, didn't take part in it. But in the last six years, I've come to understand that if we didn't have a union, we wouldn't even have a job over there. I want you to imagine as you're crossing over that bridge, you realize that you're surrounded not only by bridge marchers, but you're surrounded by bridge makers. You're surrounded by your union comrades, you're surrounded by your brothers and sisters from the Occupy Portland, you're surrounded by them all, and you realize you have what it takes to overcome your obstacles. Food. We've been helping with food baskets. Um, places for them to live, lights to be kept on in their house. We're under city ownership and we have nothing for the workers.